This is Grade 12 Economics Revision Lesson provided by the Ministry of Education. In the previous lessons, we saw theory of production. Under the theory of production, we saw production function with one variable input labor, production function with two variable inputs labor and capital, which is about isoquantus. Today, we are going to see the theory of cost. Cost is the monetary value of inputs used in production. In order to produce the outputs, we need the inputs. But we cannot get the inputs simply either from the land, the river, or air. Rather, we need to spend money. The monetary value of inputs used in production is called cost. Now let's see the types of cost. The private cost is the cost of producing a good and it is mainly incurred by a private firm but the external cost is a cost that is not borne by the firm but it is incurred by other members of the society when there is a production there is environmental problems associated with the production of a commodity environmental problems such as land pollution soil pollution noise pollution and the likes these costs are incurred by members of the society these costs are considered as external cost the social cost is the sum of these private costs that the cost that is borne by the private firm and the external cost that is the cost that is borne by the society economic cost is the payment that is made by firms to obtain and retain economic resources economic Costs are categorized into two called explicit cost and implicit costs. Explicit costs are actual monetary payments made by the firm for the purchase of resources. These explicit costs are out of pocket expenditures. Expenditures made for the purchase of such as oil, natural resources, raw materials electric all these are considered as explicit cost but the implicit costs are those costs that are incurred by the owner for example estimated rent of building of the owner is considered as implicit cost for example in ethiopia most owners produce or engage in production using their own sheds or buildings and this cost of Estimated rents are considered as implicit cost. Salary of the owner acting as a manager is also considered as implicit cost. Many business owners in Ethiopia engaged in production by using their own skill. So estimated rent of estimated salary of the owner acting as a manager is considered as implicit cost. Now let's see the short run total costs called total fixed cost and total variable cost. The total fixed cost is costs that do not vary at the level of output vary. That means even though there is an increase or decrease in the outputs produced, if there is no change in the cost of production, that cost is considered as fixed cost. And these fixed costs are the costs of fixed inputs such as rent and land. The total variable cost is a cost that directly varies at the level of output varies. Cost that increases as output increases and a cost that decreases as the output decreases is called variable cost. And these variable costs are the costs of fixed, the costs of variable inputs. Finally, the total cost of production is the sum of the total fixed costs and the total variable costs of production. Suppose the total fixed cost of production is 100 bar and the total variable cost of production is zero. In short run, 
whenever the level of output is zero the total cost of production is always equals to the total fixed cost of production because the total variable cost of production is zero if the total fixed cost of producing one into four commodity is 100 bar and that of the total variable cost of producing one unit of a commodity is 30 bar and then the total cost of production is 130 bar if the total fixed cost of producing two units of a commodity is 100 bar and the total variable cost of production of two units of a commodity is 50 bar then the total cost of production is 150 bar and if the total fixed cost of producing three units of a commodity is 100 bar and the total variable cost of producing three units of a commodity is 60 bar and then the total cost of production will be 160 bar if the total fixed cost of four units of a commodity is 100 bar and the total variable cost of production of four units of a commodity is 80 bar then the total cost of producing a commodity is 180 bar finally if the total fixed cost of producing five units of a commodity is 100 bar and the total variable cost of producing five units of a commodity is 100 timber then the total cost of production is 200 timber graphically this is the total cost of production curve and this is the total variable cost of production curve this is the total fixed cost curve the total fixed cost curve is a horizontal straight line cost curve the gap between the total cost and the total variable cost of production is the total fixed cost of production because the total cost of production is the sum of the total variable cost and total fixed cost now let's see the average costs and marginal costs in the short run the average fixed cost of production is the total fixed cost per unit of output it tells us the money that we spend for the fixed inputs on average mathematically the average fixed cost of production is calculated by dividing the total fixed cost of production for the output produced and sold similarly the average variable cost of production is the total variable cost per unit of the output produced and sold mathematically the average variable cost of production is calculated by dividing the total variable cost of production for the output produced finally the average total cost of production atc or the average cost of production in short is the total cost per unit of output produced and sold the atc or ac is mathematically calculated by dividing total cost for the output produced and sold but since the average cost of production is calculated by dividing tc for q and in the previous lessons we saw that the total cost of production is the sum of the total fixed cost of production and the total variable cost of production divided by q and then when we rewrite this the average cost of production is tfc divided by q plus the total variable cost of production divided by q and from these lessons total fixed cost divided by q is the average fixed cost of production and tvc divided by q is the average variable cost of production that means the average cost of production is the sum of afc and abc now the marginal cost of production is the additional cost that is incurred from additional sales of a commodity mathematically the marginal cost of production is calculated by dividing the change in the total cost of production for the change in output produced and sold but there is other way of calculating the marginal cost of production which is marginal cost of production is the change in the total cost of production means the change in total fixed cost of production plus the change in the total variable cost of production divided by the change in q and when we rewrite this the marginal cost of production will be the change in the total fixed cost of production for the change in q uh, plus the change in total variable cost of production divided by the change in q now 
there is no change in the total fixed cost of production or simply the change in the TFC is always zero. Hence, the marginal cost of production is always equal to the change in the total variable cost of production divided by the change in Q output produced and sold. Now, let's see the average and marginal costs of production using the following model. Here, the average fixed cost of producing the range of a commodity is undefined since the denominator is zero. And when we calculate the average fixed cost of production, it is calculated by dividing TFC for Q. So if the TFC is 100 and the output produced and sold is 1, then the average fixed cost of production is 100. If the TFC of two of a commodity is 100, 100 divided by 2 is 50. And the total fixed cost of producing three units is 100 over then the very fixed cost of production will be TFC divided by Q, which is 100 divided by 3, it is 33.3. And the TFC of the fourth is 25, and the TFC of the fifth is 20. Similarly, the average variable cost of production is calculated by dividing total variable cost for the output produced and sold. Hence, the average variable cost of production of zero in a commodity is undefined since the denominator is zero. The average variable cost of production of one unit is 30. It is calculated by dividing TVC for Q. 30 over 1 is 30. The average variable cost of producing two units is 25. It is calculated by dividing 50 for 2. The average variable cost of producing three units is 20. It is calculated by dividing 60 for 3. The average variable cost of producing the fourth is 20 again. It is calculated by dividing 84 for. And finally, the average variable cost of producing five units is 22. It is calculated by dividing 110 for 5. The average cost of production is calculated by dividing total cost for the output produced and sold. The average cost of producing zero units is undefined because the denominator is zero. The average cost of producing one unit of a commodity is 130 bar. It is calculated by dividing TC4Q. 130 divided by 1 is 130. The average cost of producing two units of a commodity is 75. It is calculated by dividing 150 for two. And the average cost of three units of a commodity is 43.3. It is calculated by dividing 160 for three. The average cost of producing four units of a commodity is 45. It is calculated by dividing 184 for four. And finally, the average cost of producing five units of a commodity is 42. It is calculated by dividing 210 for five. In other ways, we can calculate the average cost of production by adding the average fixed cost and the average variable cost of production. The average cost of producing one unit of a commodity is 130 bar, which is calculated by adding 130. The average cost of producing two units of a commodity is 75, which is calculated by adding 50 and 25. The average cost of producing three units of a commodity is 53.3, which is the sum of 33.3 and 20. The average cost of producing four units is 45, which is the sum of 25 and 20. The average cost of five, five units of a commodity is 42, which is the sum of 20 and 22. Now, the marginal cost of production is mathematically calculated by dividing the change in the total cost of production for the change in output produced and sold. And this means the MSC is the change in TC is TC final minus TC initial divided by Q final minus Q initial, which is changing Q. Now let's take this zero as Q initial and this one as Q final. And let's take this 100 as TC initial and this 130 as TC final. 
then the marginal cost of production will be 130 minus 100 divided by 1 minus 0 which is 30. So the marginal cost of producing one unit of a commodity is 30. Similarly, the marginal cost of producing two units of a commodity is 150 minus 130 divided by 2 minus 1 which is 20. And the marginal cost of producing three units of a commodity is change in TC which is 160 minus 150 divided by 3 minus 2 which is 10. And the marginal cost of producing the fourth is change in TC which is 180 minus 160 divided by 4 minus 3 which is 20. And finally, the marginal cost of producing five units of a commodity is 210 minus 180 divided by 5 minus 4 which is 30. But there is other way of calculating the marginal cost of production. The MC is mathematically calculated by dividing the change in the total variable cost of production for the change in the amount of unit produced or the quantity produced. So the marginal cost of one unit of a commodity is 30 minus 0 divided by 1 minus 0, which is 30. Again, using the TVC, the marginal cost of producing two units is 50 minus 30 divided by 2 minus 1, which is 20. Again, the marginal cost of the third is 60 minus 50 divided by 3 minus 2, which is 10. The marginal cost of the fourth is 80 minus 60 divided by 4 minus 3, which is 20. And finally, the marginal cost of five units of a commodity is 110 minus 80 divided by 5 minus 4, which is 30. This is the way of calculating the marginal cost of production. Now, let's see the curves. This is the average fixed cost of production curve, which is a continually declining curve. This is the marginal cost of production. This is the average cost of production, and this is the AVC curve. Now, let's see some of the relationships between these cost curves. First of all, let's see the relationship between the average cost of production, this AC curve, and this AVC curve. When we see the patterns of both AC and AVC is similar. The patterns of AC and AVC is U-shaped. Initially, they decrease, reach at their minimum point, and then they will increase. Another relationship between the AC and the AVC, the gap between the average cost and the average variable cost curve becomes smaller and smaller as the level of output increases. The gap between the AC and the AVC becomes smaller and smaller because the AVC curve continually declines. Since the AC is the sum of the AVC and the AVC. Another relationship between the AC and the AVC curve, the AVC curve reaches at its minimum point before the AC curve reaches at its minimum. Or AC reaches at its minimum after the AVC reaches at its minimum. So we can point out these three relationships between the AC and the AVC curve. First, the patterns of the AC and AVC is similar. Both are U-shaped curves. Second, the gap between the AC and the AVC becomes smaller and smaller as the level of output increases. This is because the AVC curve continually declines. Third, AVC is at its minimum before AC is at its minimum, or AC is at its minimum after the AVC curve is at its minimum. The other relationship between the MC and the AC curve is starting from this point, this point to this point, the average cost of production curve is above the MC. Whenever AC is above MC, then the AC decreases. At this point, the MC curve equals to the AC curve. 
whenever mc equals to ac a series at its minimum beyond this point mc is above ac whenever mc is above ac ac increases the same relationship holds true with abc and mc starting from this point to this point the abc curve is above the mc curve whenever abc is above mc abc decreases at this point the abc curve equals to the ac curve whenever abc equals to mc abc is at its minimum beyond this point the mc curve is above the abc and whenever mc is above abc abc increases so the three relationships between the mc and the ac or the abc curves are whenever ac or abc is above mc ac or abc decreases whenever mc equals to ac or abc then ac or abc reach at their minimum whenever mc is above ac or abc ac or abc increases this is the relationship the relationships between the abc and the ac curves this is the relationship between the ac and the mc curves this is the relationship between the abc and mc curves this is all about the day's revision lesson stay safe stay home thank you